This video is for small holders using gravity feed drip irrigation on a small plot of land. You can automate your drip irrigation system so that water is pumped automatically from your farm pond to the header tank and all your plants are irrigated automatically. By automating your drip irrigation system you can leave your plot unattended for weeks. This will allow you to become involved in other activities away from the farm. For example, travelling to the market to sell your produce. By watching this video, you will learn how to install the do-it-yourself solar drip irrigation kit. The kit uses measured irrigation, a new method of irrigation scheduling that responds to the prevailing weather conditions. This means that you will use much less water without affecting the yield. My name is Dr Bernie Omedy and I recently returned from Kenya where I was training farmers and extension workers. This is my drip irrigation system in Adelaide before it was automated. I manually pumped water up to the inlet on the header tank. The valve was opened manually so that all the plants in my garden were watered. This video shows you how I automated my drip irrigation system using the do-it-yourself solar drip irrigation kit. The irrigation kit includes a waterproof irrigation controller with light sensor, a double pump with filter and 10 meters of waterproof electrical cable, a solenoid valve, two float switches, an adjustable dripper, 20 connectors for electrical wire and the user manual. I will now give you step-by-step -step instructions for installing the do-it-yourself solar drip irrigation kit. Step one, remove the inlet pipe from the farm pond and connect it to the pump. Step two, Drill a 13mm hole in the side of the header tank so that the hole is about 3cm lower than the inlet to the header tank. Install one of the float switches so that the float shaft points down. Step 3. Choose a suitable evaporator. The evaporator can be any container with vertical sides, for example a bucket. Step 4. Drill a 13mm hole in the side of the evaporator so that the center of the hole is about 5 centimeters lower than the overflow level for the evaporator. Install the other float switch so that the float shaft points up. Step 5. Install the solenoid valve at ground level so that the cover protects the solenoid from the weather. Step 6. Provided there are less than 500 rippers, a 12 volt 20 watt solar panel should provide all the power required. You can purchase the solar panel either locally or online. It is easy to adjust the orientation of the solar panel if it is mounted on a pole. Step 7. A rechargeable 12 volt lead acid battery is required. You may be able to find a used car battery in good condition. If you buy a new battery, I recommend a sealed lead acid battery with a capacity of at least 7 amp hours. Step 8. The evaporator is positioned so that one of the drippers in the irrigation system drips water into the evaporator. This dripper is called the control dripper. All of the drippers in your plot, including the control dripper, should be at approximately the same level. Between irrigation events, the water level in the evaporator falls due to evaporation. Fill the evaporator with water so that the water level is just below the float switch. Step 9. The irrigation controller has 12 colour-coded wires which need to be connected to the various components. These instructions are in the user manual which can be downloaded from the Measured Irrigation website www.measuredirrigation.com.au Step 10. Submerge the pump at the bottom of the farm pond. Step 11. Start irrigating. Turn the switch on the side of the irrigation controller to the on position, switch up, and the irrigation will start. The irrigation stops automatically when the water level in the evaporator reaches the float switch. During the day, the water level in the evaporator falls due to evaporation. When the water level in the evaporator has fallen below the float switch, the irrigation starts again automatically. When it rains, the water level in the evaporator rises and delays the start of the next irrigation. If you do not wish to irrigate during the heat of the day, turn the switch to the night only position, switch down, so that the irrigation starts automatically at sunset. 
To stop the irrigation at any time, just turn the switch to the off position. I will now show you how to adjust the water usage. The amount of water that your plants need will depend on many factors in addition to the weather. For example, as the plants grow and become bigger, they will need more water. Plants growing in sandy soil will need more water than plants growing in heavy soil. To take account of all these additional factors, use a length of steel pipe to check the moisture level in the soil. The diameter of the pipe should be between 40 and 50 millimetres. An angle grinder can be used to cut some slots in the steel pipe so that you can inspect the soil inside the pipe. You can also use the angle grinder to sharpen the edge of the end of the pipe. By checking the moisture level in the soil through the slots, you can decide whether the plants have been irrigated the night before with too much or too little water. Early in the morning after irrigation the night before, hammer the steel pipe into the soil near a dripper. Remove the steel pipe from the soil and use the slots to inspect the moisture level in the soil and the position of the wetting front. You may wish to use the slots to remove some soil from the pipe and to squeeze the soil sample between your fingers. If the plants have been given too much water, then one way to reduce water usage is to reduce the surface area of evaporation. For example, the surface area of evaporation can be reduced by placing full bottles of water in the evaporator. An easier way to adjust the water usage is to use an adjustable dripper for your control dripper. Increase the flow rate to reduce your water usage and reduce the flow rate to increase your water usage. After irrigation and adjustments over several days, the water usage should stabilise at an appropriate level for the plants at their current stage of growth. As your crop grows and the water requirement of the crop changes, you may wish to repeat the process of adjusting the water usage. Measured irrigation uses much less water. By implementing measured irrigation scheduling using the do-it-yourself solar drip irrigation kit, you will use much less water. My research has demonstrated that by upgrading from programmed irrigation scheduling to measured irrigation scheduling, water usage may be reduced by 50% or more without affecting the yield. See the research report, Improvement in Crop Yield Per Litre Using Measured Irrigation, available from the Measured Irrigation website. The kit contains everything you need except for an evaporator, a steel pipe, a battery, a solar panel, connectors for the pump and the solenoid valve, and two-strand electrical cable. The kit can be ordered from the Measured Irrigation website. Unpowered Measured Irrigation. If you don't need an automated drip irrigation system, you can upgrade from drip irrigation to measured irrigation at almost no cost. All that is needed is an evaporator and a length of steel pipe. Instead of using a float switch, mark a level line on the inside of the evaporator about 3 cm below the overflow level. Simply irrigate the plants until the water level in the evaporator reaches the level line. When the automation of your drip irrigation system is complete, you can share your knowledge and experience with other farmers. If you choose to automate your drip irrigation system using do-it-yourself solar drip irrigation kit, I will support you in whatever way I can. Please send me an email whenever you have any questions. Thank you.